Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. So before we get started, I have a little house cleaning to do. Yesterday, I made a huge mistake when I was recording minute number nine, and I realized as I was playing it back that I said total net worth. First of all, I don't speak about net worth in the entire episode, so I don't know why I said total net worth. What I should have said was average acquisition cost, which is a total different thing altogether. Everything that I was saying during that whole segment was trying to figure out what your average cost is and bringing it down. So I have no idea why total net worth came out of my mouth, and I didn't realize that until I was actually listening to the episode the following day. So just so you know, total bag or your total value is everything added up in that particular wallet. The net, which is nothing I spoke about in that entire episode, is actually if you add up all of that value and subtract all the things that you possibly owe. So there was no net in there at all. But I just wanted to clarify that. I'm going to go back. I'm going to edit that little segment in the episode. However, if you've already listened to it and you're just wondering what just happened, I don't have a script. I just have some bullet points and outlines. And as I was gathering some thoughts, I just changed thought in the middle of that segment. And I didn't realize that until the following day when I was listening to that. So I apologize for that. But let's get to today's episode. Today, we're going to have some fun. We're going to look back at where things were in the 90s as far as the internet goes, because this really reminds me of the 90s as far as where we are with Web3, NFTs, crypto, all of this stuff. Everyone's trying to figure this out. It's the old Wild West. We're breaking things. We're just sorting it out. There's growing pains and there's issues. And it really brings me back to some clips of interviews of various people, including Bill Gates. David Letterman, Today Show, and all of that. And they were saying some crazy things about the internet. Now it's laughable, but it's just showing you at that time, this is the early 90s, when they're trying to figure out things, where it is going. So I'm going to play some clips, and I'm going to then give some commentary in between each one. In the midst of all this madness, I hope you can appreciate that and just get some joy out of it, because this is just some crazy times that we're in. However, doing something like this should just really lighten the mood of the situation. Millions of Americans own a personal computer. If you're one of them, you can now glimpse the future with nothing more than a modem, a phone line, and a few dollars a month. Oh, that's that right. little mark with the A and then the ring around it. At? See, that's what I said. Mm-hmm. Katie said she thought it was about. Yeah. Oh. But I'd never heard or it. Around I'd never heard it said. I'd always seen around. the mark, but never yeah. heard it said. And then yeah. it sounded stupid when I said it. Violence at NBC. So those first clips were actually taken in the early 90s, and they were trying to figure out what the at sign is in an email address. They did not have any concept of what was going on. So this is just to show you how early it was. These conversations were dominating the airways, just trying to figure out what is all this Internet stuff that everyone's talking about? What's going on? And it really reminds me of where we are right now when people are just saying, well, what's an NFT? What's going on with crypto? What is all the stuff that you guys are talking about? Is Bitcoin for real? This sounds just like the conversations that we're having today. There it is. <laughs> Violence at NBC, GE, com. I mean. Well, what well Allison should know. What, what do you is say internet about anyway? Internet is uh, that massive computer right. network. Mm-hmm. The one that's becoming really big now. What do you mean? That's big. How does one, what do you write to it? Like mail? No, a lot of people use it and communicate. I guess they can communicate with NBC writers and producers. Allison, can you explain what internet is? No, she can't say anything in 10 seconds or less. Uh (laughs) That's funny to me because that question that he asked reminds me a lot of the questions that are associated with the JPEGs, where they're stored, what's up with the wallet. I mean, what's going on here? And, you know, he's probably dead serious. He tried to understand this thing, but it almost sounds like his question is facetious. It is like a joke. But I want you to notice a couple things right there that really jumps out to me. First of all, NBC didn't have its own dot com. It was under GE because GE owned a lot of TV networks, General Electric. So if you notice, it says NBC.GE.com. And another thing, I don't know if you noticed this, but he didn't say dot in between the dot coms or see, it's it's like second nature now that I just say dot com. But he said NBCGE.com. So not even the dot com was in his language at that time. Just what is this main artery of the information superhighway? Every business, no matter how large, no matter how small, will be on the internet in the year 2000. The primary way that people will look up information, it will replace the yellow pages as we know it today. 
That clip reminds me of when people like myself say things like, it's not a matter of if people are going to come onto Web3, it's a matter of when. We're all going to get there. Just hearing someone say that every business is going to be on the internet and all that stuff, at the time, it probably sounded absolutely crazy, just like when we're saying everyone's going to be on the blockchain, all of these companies that are laughing at it now will definitely be there, we're early. Well, just imagine what those people were thinking at that time when that statement was made. Are a lot of people just getting on to the internet because they feel that they have to get onto the playing field, so to speak? But it's very hip to be on the internet right now. And this reminds me a lot of what's going on right now. We see a lot of big brands and companies trying to come into the space because a lot of these influencers and celebrities that love to ride the wave and just hop onto the next new thing, it seems like they all of a sudden jumped into this NFT thing, don't even fully understand it, are not a part of the community, but they almost feel like they have to launch something. And that question that was posed, is this the new thing that everyone's hopping onto this internet thing? It's no different in Web2, where everyone just seemed to have a Twitter profile and Facebook profile once it became popular and prominent. They had no clue how to use it, how to monetize it, how to get customers or build relationships with it. However, they just felt like they had to do their part by at least setting up the profile and never using it. And so many people or so many businesses and brands are going to do the same thing in Web3. They're going to launch coins. They're going to launch NFTs. And they're going to do all of this stuff because they don't want to get left behind. They're going to feel like they have to be there. And they don't even fully understand what's going on because they're not participating in what's going on right now. I'm afraid that if I subscribe to something like Internet, you would really be hooked. I would get hooked and I would never spend time with my family. Do you, well, and also, it, do you, does it bother you at all that these are all people that you don't really know? I mean, it, everybody's you know signing on and having these conversations and whining together or griping together or whatever. To, with people that, I mean, I, I don't know. if I, It is group therapy of the, of the 90s. Well, I just, as I mentioned, I have no desire to be a part of the Internet because I feel like I'm so inundated with information all the time that I don't really, I don't want more. Don't you ever feel like it's just constant bombardment? I don't know. I guess the thing I resent most is, is I would resent the, you know, at least when you're home, if the phone rings, you have the option of not answering it. On the Internet, people can send you messages all the time. People you don't even want to hear from. Again, sounds very laughable to us. 20 some odd years after the fact. But at this time, these were some legitimate concerns. And this sort of reminds me of when people are speaking about the metaverse, are they going to lose touch with reality? Are they not going to communicate? Are they going to hide behind this digital identity? What exactly is going on? And, you know, even the whole being bombarded with emails and contact points and all that thing. It's a laughable question now, but this was a real serious concern back then. So all the things that are popping up right now, as far as Web3 with wallets and crypto and having a digital trail and all this stuff, some of these questions are pretty laughable to someone has been uh, spent some time in the space, has done their due diligence and research. But there's questions that are going to be thrown at us that really seem like they're trying to mock us or they're not even trying to attempt to understand this stuff. But again, this is just really where we were. This is nothing new. This is only 25, 30 years ago. And these questions are being asked in Web 1. So, hey, history definitely repeats itself. What about this Internet thing? Do you you know anything about that? Sure. (laughs) What what the hell is that exactly? Well, it's it's become a place where people are publishing information. So everybody can have their own homepage. Companies are there. The latest information. It's wild what's going on. You can send electronic mail to people. Uh, it is the big new thing. Yeah, but you know, uh, uh, it's easy to criticize something you don't fully understand, which is my position here. Go ahead. But I, I can remember a couple of months ago, there was like a big breakthrough announcement <laughs> that on the Internet or on some computer deal, they were going to broadcast a, a baseball game. You could listen to a baseball game on your computer. And I just thought to myself, does radio ring a bell? <laughs> There's a difference. There is a difference. It's not a huge difference. What is the uh, difference? But you can you can listen to the baseball game whenever you want. All right. Too. Oh, I see. So it's stored in one of your memory deals. Exactly. And then you can come That's back the a year later. You talked yeah, about earlier. Yeah, yeah. Do tape recorders ring a bell? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just I just don't know. How, what what can you just knowing me the little you know me now? What how what am I missing here? What do I need? Well, if you want to learn about the latest cigars or uh, auto racing right. uh, statistics. Well, you know, or, I don't know. Uh, I've got that covered. I, I subscribe to two British magazines that devoted entirely to motorsports. And I call the Quaker State speed line about two times a half hour. <laughs> so now, now, would the computer give me more than I'm getting that way? 
Oh, you can find other people who have the same unusual interests you do. Uh, and... <laughs> You mean, you mean the troubled loner chat room on the internet? <laughs> now, David Letterman is a comedian, so he was trying to be funny here when he's actually speaking to Bill Gates on his show. However, the conversation, the talking points that they're having, the fact that it is comical is because that's really where people were at the time. As he said, what's the point of all this? And I think of when people are speaking about, well, with NFTs, they'll give you access to all sorts of things. So it's like, well, that community, well, what's wrong with the Facebook group? And then you're starting to speak about digital ownership and all sorts of other things. And they'll go through and say all sorts of alternatives and saying that the NFT and all this is no better than having an MP3 or whatever it might be. Because in their mind, they just honestly don't understand. Just like how Letterman was thinking of, well, that sounds like a magazine. That sounds like a tape. What's up with the radio? And a lot of people still are in those shoes where they just do not embrace technology. And I'm pretty sure now he has a computer and he probably is into this digital world. But it might take 25, 30 years for people to really embrace NFTs and all this stuff. However, we're definitely going there just like the Internet. And that one was one of my favorite ones, even though, like I said, he is a comedian. It was a show. It was entertainment. But the reason why it was funny is because it's true. The best comedy always has some sort of element of truth to it. And that's why people laugh. Given the decades of wisdom that has built up in the business world, investors, it sounds like you're saying, are making a big speculative bet if they're investing in your company stock. Well, I think all internet companies, you know, the, the stocks are incredibly volatile. And I've, you know... But even long term. It, long term, I believe that it's very easy to predict that there are going to be lots of successful companies born of the internet. They're going to have very large market caps and, and, and so on. I also believe that today, where we sit, it's very hard to predict who those companies are going to be. Uh, so, you know, you can make bets on these things. If we're not one of those important, lasting companies born of the internet, we will have nobody to blame but ourselves and that we will be extremely disappointed in ourselves. But there are no guarantees. Uh, it's very, very hard to predict. If you go back and look at the companies created by the PC revolution, uh, in 1980, you probably wouldn't have predicted the five winners, uh, you know, the five biggest winners. There have been lots of winners, actually. So this space is a little different, and brand name may, may mean more, and, and, and there's some increasing returns kinds of things may mean more. Now, does that sound familiar? He said a lot of key words that we use in this space, like volatility. Sure, he's talking about stock prices going up and down. But that's no different than crypto prices swinging. And as what we've seen in the last couple of days or months, really since the year started, there has been so much volatility, so much downturn and failing projects left and right. And that's really what was going on during this time. There was just massive innovation. People were trying things. There was failures. There was great winners. And really everything he said, if you just delete this out as far as a few words here and there. You could not tell me that he's not speaking about what's going on today. It really does sound like everything that we're seeing play out again. But I believe that if you can focus obsessively enough on customer experience, selection, ease of use, low prices, more information to make uh, purchase decisions with, if you can give customers all that, plus great customer service, and with our uh, toys and electronics, we have a 30-day uh, return policy. If you can do all of that, then I think you have a good chance. And that's what we're trying to do. By the way, for this last segment, I'm actually bleeping out the company's name because I want you to guess which company is doing the speaking here or which CEO of what company or you could just name the company or the CEO. And <laughs> that's why I'm leaving it out because all of this information is very applicable to now. This was actually done in 1999, this particular interview. But all these companies right now, as the struggles that we're seeing with these various growing pains, that attention to detail with the customer, offering the best experience, and all these things really apply to right now with these projects that are launching. But this last segment right here, there's some great advice that he actually gives that I think every founder of a project right now should pay attention to and apply that to what they're trying to build. It's obsessive attention to the customer experience, end to end. And that's what those distribution centers are. But you're not are a pure internet play. It doesn't, I, I, it doesn't matter to me whether we're a pure internet player. What matters to me is do we provide the best customer service? Internet, schminternet, it's, that's, you know, that, that doesn't matter. Well, but it does matter to your investors to know whether they're investing in a company that No, they is... should be investing in a company 
that obsesses over customer experience. In the long term, there is never any misalignment between customer interests and shareholder interests. Well, that's the same argument that uh, somebody at Walmart would make as well, wouldn't it? I, I don't see why not. I think they should make that argument. So uh, it's a correct argument. Okay. So, <laughs> so you'll open as many square feet of space physical space as you have to, hire as many employees as you have to. To service customers, absolutely. And we'll do it as rapidly as we can. That's a very uh, cost-intense proposition. But it does mean that the executional challenges are huge. And uh, so you'll find a bunch of people back in Seattle and around the world working very hard to make sure we service customers at the level that they're used to. And then even improving that. Isn't it, to some extent, a certain amount of with all due respect, uh, uh, corporate arrogance to assume that you can come into these businesses which you have no experience in. So obviously by now, you should probably be able to guess that this is Jeff Bezos speaking about Amazon back in 1999. And this reporter was asking some pretty tough questions. And if you play the full interview, he was actually pretty facetious with it. He was throwing some things at him that really was doubting the entire business model, was calling him arrogant for thinking that they could go against the establishment and the powers that be that were there for generations before. So all those things are definitely being said even today by the media, the legacy companies, whether it be the music, entertainment, they are all having the same amount of questioning. And in many cases, this is an organized FUD campaign, but sometimes it is just curiosity. People just don't understand where we are or where we're going. And they are very skeptical about this whole space. So anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this. All these clips really just showing how things have evolved over time. And to think that these questions were being asked about Web 1. This is just the internet, not even all the innovation and craziness that we do see today. And if I didn't tell you this was 30 years ago for many of these clips, I think I could probably get away by saying that someone is saying this about Web 3. So what are your thoughts on that? I would love to know which one of these clips was your favorite. Did you get a laugh out of it? I know I did. Feel free to tell me at Tropic Vibes on Twitter. So as usual, I want to thank you for listening as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.